Okay, in this video we're going to have a really brief look at rendering. So let's render this image here. So that's 3D view 1. So in our project browser, go find 3D view 1. Now this is what we want to render. So down here, the little teapot, click that and up comes our rendering dialog box. Now the good thing about rendering a Revit is that it has a lot of presets for you, so um, low all the way up to custom. Um, I'd recommend trying to stick somewhere around medium, otherwise you're going to end up waiting years for your renders. Unless you're sort of doing high-end stuff, there's no reason you should be going higher than that. Um, resolution, I usually stick to 150 dpi on the printer, uh, just for quick renders. Um, and so that's telling you, it's giving you a width and a height of our, what the size of our final image is going to be. So if you want to drop that into Photoshop after or something. Um, lighting, so if it's an exterior scene, just use exterior sun. Um, interior, change it to interior. And artificial lighting as if you've dropped lights into your building. Um, so we're going to stick with exterior sun. Um, the background. So you can actually import your own image into the background now, which is new. Um, or you can choose a color, um, or you can choose the Revit skies. And I usually I go with very few clouds or few clouds so with the Revit sky. So um, you just do that. The thing is, it depending on how many clouds you choose, it's going to show that reflection in the um, in the windows. And then these are sort of your um, post-production exposure controls which um, I usually do in, in Photoshop but I guess you can do them here as well so let's um, so that's about it really simple basically this is the the image we're gonna render um, if you want you can change the size of it so um, let's make you sure we clicked on scaled so width um, you know if you know an a3 is sort of 420 wide you know this is just so you can set up um, you know the size of 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 your Im your final image when it's rendered. So let's have a look at that, and then you just click render, and it'll give you a progress indicator at the top, so, um, which um, here it is. Untick that. Um, just while this is rendering, I'll tell you as well that up here we have region render. So if you click this, um, you can also um, render just a part of the, the image. So if you change some of your building or whatever and you just want to render one little part to add it to the big rendered image, you know, that's fine. Um, so that's what you use. So as you can see, it's rendering uh, relatively quick. Rendering a nice piano on the balcony there, but um, you know, as you can see, it's it's uh, really simple sort of render, but it's just starting to give you, uh, you know, a brief look at at what sort of lighting effects have, you know, um, on your building and and how your material, you know, what depending on the material you've chosen, how that's, you know, starting to affect everything, and also these trees, you know, these new RPC Revit trees, which um, really add. So there you go, one minute eleven seconds for that render. So that's pretty quick. As I said, once you close that, you then have a, um, the option to save the rendering to your project, which is a pretty good idea, or either exporting it, you know, to your desktop or something. So you can export it as a JPEG, or um, if you know what you're talking about, um, a PNG or a TIFF file. If you export it as them and drop it into Photoshop, the PNG or the TIFF file actually gives you an alpha channel um, for the background so that um, you can drop in your own background in Photoshop and it actually cuts it out with the alpha channel. So I can show the model and then show the rendering like that. Okay, so that's the difference there. And that's rendering.